All right, confession time. For the last seven days, I did something that makes my mom clutch her pearls, but maybe not as much as when she found out I was a carnivore. So what's that secret? I ate one meal a day. No breakfast, no lunch, no just a little something. Just one meal, once daily for a full week. And because I'm a doctor who likes receipts, I tracked four things people are dying to know. Weight, energy, blood sugar, mental clarity. And yes, I tracked my digestion because I've had IBS and I didn't want my gut to file a complaint. So let me walk you through what happened day by day what felt amazing, what felt rough, and what the science actually says about this OMAD trend. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Dr. Tony Hampton, a board certified family and obesity medicine doc. Let's get into it. OMAD equals one meal a day, usually a 23 hour fast and a one hour eating window. Let's be clear, OMAD is not a magic cleanse. It's basically a tool that can lower your total daily eating opportunities, which often lowers total calories, lowers insulin exposure, and gives your body a longer break between digestion cycles. But the question is, as we get ready to start a new year, hoping for a healthier new year, does it help people lose weight, improve blood sugar, and feel sharper? Or is it just diet culture wearing a lab coat? Let's find out. Here are my ground rules for my seven day experiment. Eating window, about 60 minutes dinner time. Hydration, water, unsweet tea, black coffee. Electrolytes, salted water occasionally because headaches love low sodium. Meals, I'm carnivore so it's protein for it with fat, which means no ultra processed foods for me. Blood sugar, finger stick checks, not medical advice, just curiosity. Also, this matters. My goal wasn't eat as little as possible. My goal was eat one solid meal that actually nourishes me because root cause matters. If you're under eating nutrients, your body doesn't get healthier. It just gets louder. All right, here's my day by day results. Day one, my stomach filed a missing persons report. Day one was mostly psychological. Morning was fine, but lunchtime, my brain started acting like I'd been stranded in the desert for 40 days. Hunger came in waves, intense, then gone. That's normal. Hunger hormones are trained to your schedule. Here are my results. Weight was down 0.5 to one pound, which is mostly water. My energy, decent, mild afternoon dip. Blood sugar, stable. Late afternoon, I was in the 70s to 80s range. Mental clarity was mixed, slightly foggy, early, better later. Day two. This is the day people quit. Day two was the hardest. I wanted to file a missing persons report. What was missing? Lunch. Maybe it was psychological. Maybe my body was missing what it normally gets. This is where a lot of people confuse discomfort with danger. Sometimes it's danger. Sometimes it's adaptation. The difference is your symptoms. Here's a tip that helped. Hydration plus electrolytes plus staying busy. My weight was down one to two pounds total. Energy lower than usual midday. Blood sugar, still stable mostly in the 80s. My gut, I noticed something important. One giant meal can irritate IBS if you rush it. So I slowed down, chewed well, and I didn't try to make up for the whole day. Day three, hello mental clarity. Day three was the turning point. I felt calmer, more focused, and a lot of people describe this as fasting clarity. One theory, after a long fasting stretch, your body shifts towards fat burning and ketone production, especially if you weren't on keto or carnivore previously, which can feel mentally steady for some people. Weight was down two to 2.5 pounds total. Energy was steadier. Blood sugar still smooth, fasting in the mid 80s. Mental clarity noticeably better. Day four, steady energy. And my meal tasted like a Grammy award. This was the day I realized something. Most people don't have an energy problem. They have a blood sugar roller coaster problem. On OMAD, most people realize that they stop constantly spiking and crashing because they aren't constantly eating. My weight, down approximately three pounds total. Energy, consistent. Blood sugar, very stable throughout the day. Mouth rise after meals. Gut, good, but only because I kept my meals sensible. This is the part nobody tells you. OMAD works best when your meal is real food. Day five. The social struggle is real. By day five, hunger wasn't the main issue. Life was. It was the holidays. My clinic was having a holiday party. Old Matt can be socially awkward. My weight was down three to 3.5 pounds total. Energy was good. Mental clarity solid. Gut still stable. Day number six. This feels easier than I expected. At this point, my body had adjusted. 
And here's what surprised me. I didn't feel deprived. I felt structured. I also noticed I had less food noise, that constant mental chatter about what to eat next, especially for lunch. Day seven, after seven days of OMAD, my weight was down three to four pounds, mostly early water and maybe a little fat. My energy, rough days, one to two, strong days, three to seven. Blood sugar, steady overall, fewer fluctuations. Mental clarity, improved after day three. IBS, stayed stable because I didn't turn my one meal into an eating contest. Let me be a doc for a moment and talk about what the research says. Because anecdotes are interesting, but data is the difference between trend and tool. Number one, time-restricted eating can reduce weight especially with tighter windows. A randomized controlled trial in Cell Metabolism 2020 studied adults with obesity using four hour or six hour time restricted feeding and found modest weight loss over eight weeks. That's not OMAD exactly, but it's in the same family. Fewer hours eating leads to often fewer calories without counting. Number two, timing matters. Eating earlier may improve insulin sensitivity. A Cell Metabolism 2018 randomized crossover trial in men with prediabetes found that early time restricted feeding improved insulin sensitivity, blood pressure, and appetite even without weight loss. Key point, fasting can help metabolism beyond just the scale. Number three, not every time window automatically causes weight loss. A randomized trial in JAMA Internal Medicine 2020 testing a 16-8 style approach found that time-restricted eating did not outperform a control schedule for weight loss or metabolic markers in that study. Translation, if your eating window includes ultra-processed foods or overeating, the window alone won't save you. Number four, True, one meal per day has mixed outcomes if calories are forced. A controlled trial in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition 2007 tested one meal a day versus three meals a day while keeping calories similar and found people could comply, but there were modest changes in some risk factors. And it raised questions about whether stuffing all calories into one sitting is ideal for everyone. That's why my version wasn't force feed. It was one nourishing meal. Number five. Early, time-restricted eating can help weight loss and mood in some people. A randomized clinical trial in JAMA Internal Medicine 2022 found early time-restricted eating was more effective for weight and fat loss, and it improved some cardio-metabolic outcomes compared to longer eating windows. So yes, fasting strategies can work, but the details matter. So who should not do OMAD? Let's keep it safe and real. Avoid OMAD or get medical supervision if you are pregnant or breastfeeding, underweight, have a history of eating disorders, on insulin or meds that can cause low blood sugar, unless supervised, prone to fading, severe reflux, or IBS flares with large meals. If you try OMAD, my best tips are, number one, don't start with OMAD. Start with a 12-12, maybe then a 14-10, then a 16-8 fast first. Number two, Prioritize protein in your one meal. Your muscles are not optional. Number three, hydrate plus salt if you get headaches or dizziness. Number four, don't binge your one meal. Eat like an adult, not like it's an airport layover. Number five, watch your gut. If IBS acts up, split the meal into two smaller plates within your window. Here's the truth. OMAD isn't magic. It's a structure that can help some people reduce overeating improve insulin exposure, and calm food cravings. But if your one meal is ultra processed, low protein, or you're using OMAD to ignore stress, sleep trauma, or emotional eating, your body will still ask for the root cause just louder. And if you've made it to this point in the video, drop a comment, where are you watching from? And tell me, could you do OMAD for seven days? Or would you rather wrestle an alligator in dress shoes? And if you're curious, yes, For me, I decided to return to my mostly 16-8 fast routine. I simply can't get enough food in during my one hour feeding window. But for those who can, it's a great option. Until next time, protect your health like it's your job, because it is.